So in today's class, uh, will be it will be like a recap of whatever you have studied in your twelfth or uh, graduation level. That's like uh, we'll be talking about determinants. And we'll lay the foundation for the next class. OK, so. By the way, what is the complexity of determinant? Sir, it okay, depends how you have represented it. It depends how you represented it. OK, that's correct. But then uh, how I represent it? That is important, right? <laughs> That's fine. So, so determinants are usually we find determinants for square matrices. And um, so determinants of a matrix of one element. Sorry, it should not be square. determinants of one element. This is how we represent it. And uh, determinants of two cross two. This is how we write it. A D minus B C. That's how we write it actually. Uh, We'll quickly go through some of the properties of determinant. One of the property is uh, property one. Determinant, uh, let me write DT. Or in small, let me write, that is better. Determinant of Identity matrix. How much? Over. One. So that is what an example is. Okay. P2. when rows are exchanged or interchanged, not exchanged, interchanged in fact. Interchange would be the perfect word. I N T E R C when rows are interchanged, the determinant changes its sign. That is, uh, if I have a matrix like this and uh, I have another matrix like this where the rows are swapped the rows are swapped interchange so thus equality or inequality sign that I will give here would be minus the next property uh, a determinant of a matrix is a 
linear function of the first row. By the term linearity, by the term linear, this subject is linear algebra. So I hope you know what linear is. We have uh, something like a multiplicant uh, scalar quantity or addition. That way we actually represent. So um, if we have a matrix like uh, A, B, C, D, and uh, I multiply this one with, uh, let us say, um, lambda. I have multiplied the row, one of the row, okay, lambda. So one of the row is multiplied with a scalar. So this actual lambda times A, B, C, D, which is actually not true, which is actually not true in case of matrices. If a matrix is to be, if a matrix is to be multiplied with a scalar quantity, let us say K, is equal to uh, k times a b c d then it becomes actually k a k b b a c k d isn't it but this is the case in the case uh, this is the case when it is a matrix but in the case of determinants <clears throat> this is uh, row specific actually this you can very well prove that prove it this is one of the property of linearity another property is the if uh, i have a matrix like uh, again a uh, c d and uh, sorry b uh, and this row is let us say I this particular row I can it is a uh, summation of two elements again I can represent it is as Okay, so these are the three important properties of a determinant. <clears throat> now, from these three properties, let us derive some more properties, some auxiliary properties like uh, they are also important very important so property number one well i say a determinant uh, the property three says the determinant of a matrix is a linear function of the first row so linear function of the first row but then here it says when rows are interchanged the determinant changes its sign so basically i can interchange the rows and uh, the same thing can be applied on the second row also the same thing is applied on the second row as well if cd is interchanged for this particular for this sec the right hand side matrix the same thing applied so basically 
this we can extend and say that uh, uh, determinant is a linear function of all rows and later on we will find that it's not just rows it's also columns So another property, if two rows are equal, determinant is equal to zero. If two rows are the same, the determinant is zero. If uh, elements of one of the rows are all zeros determinant is equal to zero matrix is not invertible if determinant is equal to 0. Well, this is again important like uh, A matrix times B matrix and its determinant is equal to however <coughs> A plus B is not equal to This is not true. Eh? Similarly, we can write that uh, determinant of A inverse is equal to 1 by similarly, we can write. Uh, a transpose this itself proves that uh, this is uh, it's a function of rows as well as columns and all those things number eight uh, determinant of diagonal matrix let me write it as D. So, what is that? Um, determinant of diagonal matrix. That is product of 
there are no elements. Similarly, determinant of uh, low triangular matrix. That's also product of diagonal element. Determinants of upper triangular matrix. That is also product of diagonal elements. OK. One more important property that is uh, usually we do it using that uh, Gaussian elimination. Uh, what is that? Uh, I mean, uh, row uh, whenever. A row is uh, scaled and uh, added with another row. The determinant of matrix doesn't change. OK. So a lot many properties are there. But then the bottom line is uh, being a student of computer science, I only look for how fast I can compute everything. So a two cross two matrix. I say it is uh, A, B, C, D. So A, D minus B, C. So um, if it is a three cross three. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. So this is actually what we, what we do. We freeze one of the rows and the corresponding column, isn't it? This is what we do. We freeze one row and uh, We freeze one row and one column. We freeze one row and one column. And from there we find out A times E F H I. Oh. 
माइनस बी टाइम्स डी एफ जी आई दैट इज द नेक्स्ट टाइम आई फ्रीज दिस पर्टिकुलर रो दिस पर्टिकुलर कॉलम एंड द थर्ड टाइम आई फ्रीज एन अदर कॉलम and that is how i write it c times d e g h and whenever i write it completely let me write it um a e i minus a uh, h f or for the sake of symmetry let me write it in this way a f h minus b d i plus b f g plus c d h minus c e g 1 yeah so what i want to convey here these are the things you know that is what someone said that uh, this is the way you represent the matrix Uh, one of you said that the way you represent the matrix uh, that way only the complexity increases and uh, this is the <clears throat> this is the most common way that we compute determinant uh, of a matrix and uh, look at this we have how many elements here how many elements six six components are there six components are to be evaluated in 6 uh 1 2 3 4 5 6 components are to be evaluated and here we have uh, two components are to be evaluated and if you check it is like a times determinant of a sub matrix b times determinant of a sub matrix c times determinant of a sub matrix so i have frozen one row and all the sub matrix combinations are evaluated and the lowest sub matrix that i am taking is 2 cross 2 so when this is 4 cross 4 the same thing you start doing but then there are four uh elements along the first row so <clears throat> four times uh um first row first element will be having a 3 cross 3 matrix determinant of 3 cross 3 that will be evaluated by another three number of 2 cross 2 matrices so like that if you compute so that becomes uh, four times um three times two times that is equal to 24 components in a four cross four matrix determinant of 4 cross 4 matrix 424 components would be there or or basically speaking for an n cross n matrix this is actually factorial n and for a computer science guy if anything factorial then you are in big soup order of factorial it's a deadly one 
that you that I need not say. So at best, what you can go with this process is actually um, say factorial 12, factorial 15 or 16, something like that. <clears throat> that will be feasible at least to compute. Exercise 15 cross 15 or 16 cross 16. Up to that, I believe you can go. Uh, that will be. I mean, you can compute that. I mean, beyond also that you can compute, but then that will be infeasible. Too much of expense, time expense. So, what are the solution? Solution lies with the properties. The solution lies with all these properties and the important properties are these three. That highlights here number eight, number nine, number ten. So. Just a second. I got it. OK. So. What happened? Justice. Okay, is there anything else that I'm missing? Uh, yeah, there is one more important concept uh, that we call it as cofactor minor. So what is a minor? A minor is the determinant of any square submatrix. So if I am having a matrix like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, can I call five, six, eight, nine? as a minor can i call this as a minor yes sir it would be minor of first component two three can i call it as a minor it's not a square submatrix that's right it's not a square it's not a square, so I cannot call it as a minor. What about four, six, uh, 
seven nine. Just a little minor of uh, second component two. That's right. What about uh, one two five six? No, oh, sir. Elements are not in proper order. This is not a minor. This is this cannot be a sub matrix. This is not square. Though it is a sub matrix, it is not square. And though it is a square, it is not a sub matrix. Okay, so what's the cofactor? So if a matrix is given A, <coughs> let me write the matrix as A. The system many a time doesn't respond it properly. A I J. So is the matrix. So cofactor of element A I J. So cofactor of A I J is equal to minus one to the power I plus J times determinant of minor of AIJ, right? OK. But then this is again a very expensive way of calculating. That is what I was trying to convey at that time that uh, this is exactly what we did for this three cross three matrix. This is exactly what we did for the three cross three matrix. Uh, mm. No, no, no. Uh, this cofactor definition, I missed one line, right? Cofactor of A i j equal to minus uh, 1 to the power i plus j times determinant of minor of A i j uh, times A i j, right? It is A i j. Okay, that's correct now. So that is what I was trying to convey here that this is very an expensive way of calculating the things. No.
in fact uh, we haven't uh, seen that uh, uh, lu decomposition and all those things i haven't told you that is uh, quite common you can very well read that portion but uh, i'll take one of the class to just quickly recap the way this determinant is being done so uh, that will also sir. be quickly recapped yeah so why we are multiplying aij in cofactor of aij I Hello. Think, sir, yes. Uh, uh, sir, I was asking that why we are multiplying a i j in cofactor of a i j. Well, I was talking about the um, cofactor of a i j one. Yeah, that's what cofactor of the element a i j. It's actually a scalar quantity. Uh, Okay, you do not multiply a i j, right? Yes, sir. It's a, it's only the right, right, right. Uh, it's a, a determinant is not a series summation of the cofactors, rather cofactor times a i j. So cofactor will be only this much, right, right, right. Um, that's correct. Cofactor only will be this much. Minus one to the power i plus j. That is just to segregate the even and odd term and determinant of the minor of the aij that's correct okay so let's take an example one more we have a couple of minutes left One, two, three, minus two, three, two, three, minus one, one. Can we find the determinant of this? Let me write in this way. Rho 2 is equal to Rho 2 plus 2 times Rho 1. This is one of the property. This is one of the properties and it doesn't change the determinant. So what happens with this? 2 times Rho 1 plus Rho 2 so this this particular uh, element becomes zero so let me write one one two three three minus one one and this becomes zero two times row one plus uh, 4 plus 3 is 7, 6 plus 2 is 8, right? Next, let me make another move. That is, R3 is equal to R3 plus minus 3 times R1. So 1, 2, 3, 0, 7, 8. This becomes 0. Minus six, minus one, minus seven, um, minus nine, plus one, 
minus 8. Okay, what is the next? R3 is equal to R3 plus R2, 1, 2, 3, 0, 7, 8, 0, 0, 0. So the number of computers reduces drastically. Yeah, here it became zero, but then not always it will be zero. Okay, so we'll try to find out how more easily we can find determinants in our subsequent class as well as like uh, what way it it's a part of linear algebra but then this will lay the foundation for something more typical things and uh, there is uh, one more short class i will take that is on the lu decompositions and everything that is again a quick that will be again like a quick recap of whatever you have seen well, till then, uh, we'll stop here. Thank you.